In this video, we will show you how to replace your left front axle assembly on this Honda Accord. This will be located inside of your front wheel well. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. Safely raise and support the front of your vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. You'll find that you have a 17 millimeter headed bolt that comes through from the front, through the control arm, all the way along the backside of that strut area. Use a 17 millimeter for both sides. Let's get this out of here. Now we'll remove the bolt by driving it out from the rear towards the front. A quick inspection and we'll set it aside. Now we'll continue on to where the sway bar link connects to your lower control arm. You'll find that you have a 14 millimeter nut. Commonly for this, you can use an Allen head directly in the center of the stud of the sway bar link. Hold that stud and use a 14 millimeter to remove the nut. Ours is completely rusted. Let's get my swivel socket on here. Use a 32 millimeter to remove your axle nut. Hammer and punch right in the center here. We want to try to get some movement from the axle and the wheel bearing. Now we can continue at that ball joint. For the ball joint, you'll find that you should have a cotter pin holding your nut in place. Remove the cotter pin and then remove your 17 millimeter nut. With the nut off of there, we can continue on separating the ball joint from the lower control arm. Sometimes for this, you'd want to use some sort of ball joint separator so you don't damage the ball joint. If you don't have one of those, you could use a hammer and we'll just carefully start tapping along the control arm here to cause vibration and allow penetrant to make its way in between the ball joint and the control arm. Got that separated. Now that we have that separated, let's give this a quick inspection just to ensure that we did not damage the ball joint in any way. Now we can start separating the axle from the inside of the wheel bearing here. To do that, we'll take hold of the axle and the steering knuckle and gently separate the two while resting the axle out and towards the front here. Follow the axle in to where it connects to your transmission. We're going to continue on to separating the axle from the transmission. The axle itself will have a shaft that goes into it. There's going to be a seal and typically you will have fluid that comes out of this area. So make sure you have a collection bucket for recycling purposes. For this, you can simply use a pry bar. Get in between the transmission and the axle and gently pry it apart, being careful not to cause damage. Once you have some movement from this area, we can continue on inside the wheel well. Out in this area, we're going to be careful for any pinch points. You can see that there are several. Take hold of the knuckle. We're going to carefully pull this away, being careful not to put too much pressure on that brake flex hose. You could damage it. Let's take that axle and we'll start sliding it out and away towards us here, being careful not to hurt ourselves. The next thing you'll want to do is carefully start bringing this control arm down so you can bring the axle out in between the axle and this area right here. If you need to, you can use a pry bar right up inside this hole here. Give you a little bit of leverage. Slide 
slide the axle right out of here. There it is, friend. With the axle out of the transmission, it's important to take a close look at the transmission where the axle goes in. You'll find you have a rubber seal. Wipe that down and give it a quick inspection. Make sure it's soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. This one looks fine, so we'll continue with installing our brand new axle. Let's get that axle in here. The first thing we'll do is just gently place this up here. Once you've done that, we'll continue on by pulling the knuckle away. We're going to have to put the axle in between the wishbone of the front strut and the lower control arm. So you just want to pull down on the control arm as needed. We'll slide that shaft right on in between that area, and then we can continue on to putting the axle inside of the transmission. While bringing this up there, you want to make sure that you align it properly so you don't damage your boots. Once you feel as though you have the axle going into the transmission properly, it's going to be time to drive it all the way in there. What I mean by that is at the very end of the axle, it has a small lock ring that will lock into the transmission. To do that, we can use a rubber mallet on the very end of the axle here. Never use a regular hammer because you don't want to damage the threaded area. There we are. Now we'll slide the axle shaft into the back side of the wheel bearing. Once you have it so it starts going in, we'll continue on with aligning the ball joint with the lower control arm. Start on the ball joint nut, bottom it out, and then torque it to 65 foot-pounds. Once you have that torqued, the next thing you want to pay attention to is the slots that are on the nut in comparison to the hole that goes through the center of your stud. Make sure they're aligned. If for some reason it's not, continue on tightening the nut until the very next slot is. After you've done that, you can put in a locking cotter pin. Slide that right on through there. And then pin it over so there's no way it can loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. Let's put on the lower sway bar link nut. We'll snug this up and then torque it to 22 foot pounds. We'll align this as needed. Put the bolt in from the front towards the rear. Just slide it right on through. You may have to raise or lower the suspension as needed. At this point, we'll continue on putting pressure underneath the lower control arm, being careful not to damage our lower ball joint stud. What we need to do is apply pressure in the upward manner so that it brings the vehicle into the original ride height position. We'll use our 17 millimeters to snug this bolt and then we'll torque it to 47 foot pounds. Remove the support from underneath your control arm. The next thing we'll do is apply a thin amount of clean motor oil along the back side or the seating side of the nut. Start that axle nut in place onto your axle and then you want to make sure that you bottom this out with a ratchet by hand. After you've bottomed out the axle nut by hand, it's going to be time to torque it. What you'll find is when you go to turn this to torque it, it's going to spin the brake rotor on you. You could have a second person inside the vehicle stepping on the brake, that'll hold it still. Or if you're doing it by yourself, just use a pry bar in between the studs diagonally down to the ground. That'll hold this in place and we can continue torquing this to 134 foot-pounds. After it's torqued, the next thing that you want to do is pay attention to the shaft on the axle. You'll find that it has a small notch in it. You have to use a hammer and punch and drive the axle nut down into this area. That'll lock it in position. Mm -hmm. 
Once you've confirmed that that's torqued, we can continue on to reinstalling our wheel. Reinstall your wheel, start on all the lug nuts, and then torque them to 80 foot-pounds. With the wheel on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Okay friend, we've got the car back together. At this point, take it for a road test and get yourself a four-wheel alignment. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.